Hey guys, just cleaning up this morning, putting some stuff away. And I come across my dim bulb tester. You know, I've never really have uh, described this to anybody that might be starting out because it was new to me when I started out. And um, this is by no means a replacement for an isolation transformer, a variac, or any other testing equipment that you might come across to thoroughly test a radio's uh, ability to operate but this is a good way to test for short circuits either in the chassis itself uh, with shorted filter capacitors uh, maybe a shorted tube, maybe a shorted dial lamp in some cases and if this bulb lights brightly when you flip your radio on you have a short if it glows brightly and then dims down and your radio operates you have a less chance of having a short and things should operate pretty good now what this system does, what this setup does, is basically put the filament of a light bulb in series from your AC mains to the power cord for your radio or uh, this one right here I should say, for your radio or your uh, piece of tube equipment, whatever you're testing. Now this does not work with solid state equipment. I've tried it. I've put as low as 25 watt bulbs in solid state equipment and they'll still come on. So this is more suited for tube type equipment testing. So basically what we've done, we've built a tester, this going down to our power, coming in from outside. One side of that goes to the hot side of the switch, comes out the hot side of the switch, goes to our gold terminal on our light bulb, uses the filament by going through, comes back out the silver side of our light bulb, and then goes into our plug on one side. And then the other side of the line cord attaches to the opposite side of your plug, which in this case, this attaches to the neutral side. This goes to the filament, comes back, attaches to the hot side. So basically it puts this bulb in parallel between this and your radio. And then your radio completes the circuit by sending power over everything's good over there, it comes back, this doesn't light. This comes back as a short, this will light up brightly. Now you might be like me, you might have some questions about how big of a bulb should I put into my dim bulb tester. Well, I downloaded some information off a of line. This is from a website called Radio Winkles, Wrinkles, can't try to say that ten times fast, about building a dim bulb tester. And you can build them out of just a just about anything you have laying around. This was all scrap material that I had, you know, the boxes, the switch, the piece of wood, the um, the plug, the holder, all the stuff I had just laying around the house from other projects I had done. And, you know, this is a basic layout for what this fella did. And this is how I kind of built my version of that. But basically, this is what it does. You can see the power comes in, goes straight to the plug, which in my case this comes over, goes straight to the plug and the other side comes in, goes through your switch, comes out of your switch, goes up through your bulb, and then over to your plug. Now this recommends you start out with a 15 watt bulb. I'll go as low as 25 for some things and you know for me to use this piece of equipment on my radios like I said it's not a replacement for an isolation transformer or a variac I will thoroughly go through a radio and make sure everything looks good, test a few things that might be questionable before I even try to power it up on this unit. Now you'll ask how big a bulb should I put in here? Well this Westinghouse unit comes back as being 35 watts, 50 cycles, 117 volts, which could be operated between 105 and 120 volts AC or DC in that case. So 35 watts is our key. We want to be higher than that. You could go one and a half to two times higher than that. For this instance I got a 40 watt bulb in here. So, we'll flip on our switch and we'll turn on our radio. Turn this around so I can get at it a little better. And I'll show you what happens when we turn on our switch. And as the tubes draw current, it pulls it away from the light bulb until it will come down and glow dim. or not at all in some cases. And our radio should play. 
This is cold, so it's going to take it a few minutes to start up. Dodge Charger with up to 31 MPG highway. And there you go. So this is just a brief overview of some of the stuff I've learned starting out that this is a pretty valuable piece of equipment to have even though it's just built out of scrap parts. But it's not by any means just to take this unit and plug it directly in the wall. I suggest highly that you do not do that because you could do more harm than good by blowing a power transformer. Some of these parts are completely irreplaceable. They're not out there anymore like common today parts for some of these junk pieces of crap we have out on the market today. You want know, to try to preserve what you have and do the best to your ability to test it. You know, I wouldn't, I don't want to try to replace this. This was from 1953. Just think, of, you know, how many times somebody sat down and enjoyed this radio by turning it on and listening to it. So, I just thought I'd help you out a little bit today. Thanks for watching my videos, and uh, more to come later.